Matt, morning, mate. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, man. All, all good, thank you. How was the weekend? Yeah, it was good. Went, um, went for a little break away with the missus. We've just had a baby, which is why I'm contacting you, because I'm out of shape. My man, um, congratulations. But yeah, so, cheers. <sighs> Must not complain about weather. Nah, that's not too bad, is it? My TikTok feed at the moment is, how to stay cool. We know how to stay cool. We're British. We've been going on our holidays for years. It is warm though. Got a new pre-workout to try from Faction Labs. Did you pick it up then? It's not too bad actually. One scoop, 250 meg caffeine, 120 meg alpha GPC. Hordenine, nice. So uh, welcome to a full week of training. This is the first time I've ever done a full week of training. I'm excited. So from Monday today until Sunday, I'm gonna take you through all of my training and also my, my conditioning work and my cardio as well. Just had some consults this morning, it's now 20 to 11. Just a, a few check-ins as well after my consult call. So off to the gym. In terms of breakfast at the moment, this weather, appetite's pretty slim if I'm being completely honest with you. Sometimes I'm going to the gym completely fasted. On the days that I am hungry, I will have something like bowl of cereal and some whey protein or bowl of oats with some fruit and some whey protein or maybe like a, a bagel with banana and peanut butter and a little bit of honey, something light that's relatively high in carbohydrates that will see me through the session. I do all of my steps or the vast majority of my steps in the morning. So I wake up about six, I walk gunner getting walked because the weather's absolutely ridiculous. So we'll have a nice hour walk. I'll box off around about four, four and a half thousand. And then I'll do the remaining steps throughout the day. Not the greatest taste in that. Tastes like uh, soil, pink bits it's called. That's gonna go into the, doesn't taste good, but the effects are good category. I think they use sexual innuendos on their flavorings. I noticed the carrot in me was very angry. It's 2022. So if you haven't already seen my full week of training in the sense of the actual split that I'm running at the moment from Monday to Sunday, then it'll be linked up here. Today's Monday, we have got upper push and swim. I am currently rocking the Roka gear. So these are the buoyancy shorts. They're okay, they're not too bad. Bit of a, uh, you know, taking an arm and a leg to get on as they're more geared towards kind of outdoor swims and long distance swims. These are the Swim Pro 2 shorts. I'm gonna switch these up because I mean, David Lloyd pulls going up and down. I didn't even realize they'd be like this when I bought them, if I'm being completely honest with you. I had no idea, I thought they'd just be the usual material, so I think I'm just gonna get them some regular Speedos that I used to wear when I was a swimmer. Because I was indeed a swimmer. I think a lot of people, they message me thinking, oh, you know, have you always been like this, or when did you know it was a switch? Like, before bodybuilding, I was very active. I used to play football on Sunday, used to swim a lot. I got quite high in swimming, I got high, quite high in cricket, and then bodybuilding kind of took over. So, it's not like I'm doing all of this again, or like for the first time, I'm just, like, I'm redoing it, I'm going back into it. So we've got our swim today. Like I said, these are the Swim Pro 2 shorts. I've got the Roka F1 goggles. These are fantastic, these are brilliant, faultless, so I'll keep them in and just a Roka swim cap. I think I might go and swim outside today because it is bloody warm, it's hot. So plenty of hydration today. Extra scoop of electrolytes in today's intra when I'm training. Let's go down to the gym. Let's get this show on the road, shall we guys? Yeah, woohoo! Open up today's session with Incline Press. This is not a very given Incline Press machine. I can tell you that for free, yes I can. It's a lot of fitness. It just seems to get heavier and heavier as every rep goes on. Managed to get up to four plates. I do miss my Cybex and I miss my hammer strength and I miss my, my prime as well at Crayford. So with my chest work, I'll always go from an incline variation into a flat. So incline dumbbell, incline smith, incline machine into a flat, be it pin loaded. This particular machine's really nice. It's a new addition to David Lloyd Beckenham. Converges a little in the middle, a little bit in the middle. And what I do is sometimes I use it for my tricep work. So those two handles that are on are on like kind of free motion. So I'll put them in slightly closer and do some tricep close grip work. Then into a dumbbell shoulder press, one set six to eight, two sets ten to twelve. You're probably thinking, why has he only done half a rep? My camera was out of focus and I, I'm not going to let you guys sit through an unfocused clip so you can have the dregs of me walking off with my varicose vein-ridden calves. Thanks, Dad. Into some dumbbell bent over rows. 
three sets of six. Platforms were out today, so no Pendlero with a straight bar. These actually felt a little bit better. You can get a little bit more range because obviously the, the position of the fixed bar, you stop. But uh, yeah, I'm going to keep these in and then keep the pendle at the later stage of the week. Into some bodyweight dips, which were made even harder due to the unstable machine. Cheers, David Lloyd. <laughs> I mean, I'm a platinum member, guys. I've got Karens in the swimming pool. I've got unstable tricep dip machines. Shocking. Then some dual rope, or if the ropes are out, I'll do these long D handles. There's a few new little bits of kit in this David Oil, which is quite nice. So dual rope extensions, one set 10 to 12, two sets 12 to 15. And then my favorite tricep exercises, or my favorite tricep exercise, which is the overhead cross cable extension. Bit of a pain to to get into. It was a bit of a pain to tell clients how to get into this. So I need to get my exercise library done. But any overhead work, I'll always do high volume. I find that when you increase the, the load on overhead work, it just fatigues too quickly. So I want to get more and drive more volume into those triceps. Then on to swims outside. This is Karen, Karen Gate, Karen Saga. Are these? Sorry, guys. I think we've got some clips of Michael Phelps and not TM Cycle. Oh, it is me. I was a swimmer, you know. I, like, I was a big uh, butterfly 50 meter champion, 4x25 meter relay champion, multiple records broken for Saxon Crown Club. I mean, you know, you are looking at an athlete here. The bodybuilding days, they're, they're long gone. We're back to being an athlete. Beautiful, that. I'm giving it the big and bit. It is very warm. I don't get nervous, but I'm starting to get a little bit oi. Classic Tom Skinner. I'm hungry now, good session. Good upper push by session with a little swim. It's only like 20, 20, 20 odd minutes. 600 meter, first swim back in a while. Got a couple of bagels, got one with an egg and two bacon medallions, and then I've got one with lightest Philadelphia cheese and bacon as well, a little bit of rocket. So a uh, nice amount of protein, bit of fat, some carbohydrates. It is 20 past two. Have this then three till like six-ish. Crack on with some more work. Why have I come up here? So I turned my watch off. I use a Garmin Phoenix 6 by the way. Garmin Phoenix 6. I don't think I've got a Pro. I think it's just the Garmin. Oh, that is a terribly poor scene. Sorry, hold on. Garmin Phoenix 6. No, I've just got the... No, I have got the Garmin. I've got the Pro. GPS. It wasn't that expensive though. Three... Yeah, that was it. It was 300 quid. It wasn't 555, I think it was on offer. I don't know what that one is. But yeah, I've got a Garmin. So Apple Watch is for like children. <laughs> strap, get me a new strap for Christmas. That's for children. These are for like elite sportsmen and women. I'm talking endurance, hybrid, animalistic type people. Like you see all the, this is the thing, like you see all the proper people in the, in the fitness world. They've got one of these on their wrist. Me included. <clears throat> I am proper. You alright there, guns? He's in Strug City today, the boy, bless him. So, I'm so I do apologise. Sometimes I'm good on camera, sometimes I'm just all over the place. I turned this off before my swim. Now, the calories burned in my hour to potentially hour 15 weightlifting sessions are already accounted for they're already calculated when i come to do my bmr and i work out my activity multiplier okay so i don't for example every gym session i go in look at my watch and go right i've burnt 500 i must eat this back i've burnt 300 i don't do that at all and it's not something we should do and it's not something that i think fitness you know online coaches should prescribe i know some do some don't it's too it's way too confusing and as i mentioned before the calories burned in our gym sessions aren't what we kind of perceive them to be the only time i eat back my calories are when i do direct conditioning and cardio work if you haven't seen the previous video i've already explained it so click that and uh and kind of uh take that on board but when I do my swim, for example, I will track that. When I turn this on during my weightlifting sessions, it's more so for heart rate, it's more so for kind of time. So for example, if I'm having 90 seconds rest and I finish on three minutes, I wait four and a half minutes, bang, I'm back in. So I do use it for that. But in terms of actual calories burned, 
do not use it. Okay, right, I'm gonna wrap up one more client startup and then I'm gonna go and have some dinner. Tonight for dinner, we're gonna have some spinach and ricotta ravioli with some reduced fat Cumberland sausages and make these spicy. Cook them off in some tomato roasted garlic. Nice and simple. I think it's important when you're dieting, just have a bit of variety when you go on your food shop. Fancy a bit of that. Could maybe have some fresh pasta and some sun-dried tomato pesto. Got some chicken in there and some chicken wraps and some mini peppers if I fancy some chicken for heaters. So every time I do my food shop on a Sunday and like a Thursday, I vary my dinners up a little bit. I have what you call flexibly diet. Quick, simple and easy dinner. This is the, uh, the Jamie Oliver spinach and ricotta. I did some tomatoes and some tomato roasted garlic sauce with some uh, of the low fat sausages. Baked them off in some chili flakes as well. 41 protein, 31 fat and 75 carb. Good morning folks, how are we? It's Tuesday, welcome to the second day of the full week of training. Today we've got a lower pull and biceps with a Metcon, 400 calorie Metcon today. Just having a, or just had a nice bowl of oats with mixed frozen berries, some banana, a little bit of honey, and some whey protein as well. So I have that between my consult calls, it only takes me 15 minutes. So when I wrap these consult calls up, Around about nine, I can have my pre-workout and I can get straight into the gym. Okay, so today is Metcon number one. Metcon standing for metabolic conditioning. But Tom, isn't that the name of a shoe also? Yeah, Nike do Metcons. These are my ones, the green. I tend to use these when I'm doing leg sessions or like leg bias, Metcon work, split squats, lunges, squats. I've also got a pair of these. Nike, <sighs> smash, Reebok Nano X1s. If I'm being completely honest with you, I tend to prefer these, you know. I feel like these are a combination of my ASICS gels and these. These have got more a bit more supportive, sturdy heel on them now. So, it does, you know, if you've got poor ankle mobility, then these are great. But these, are, these aren't too bad either. I like them both, but I tend to like these a little bit better. But I'm wearing these today. What am I like? Anyway, what is metabolic condition or metcon? Another buzzword you might hear is what all it is is really interval training. It's scheduled and structured work rest periods with either a time goal or like a calorie target. That's what I work with. So I have a set amount of calories that I need to burn within the week and it's broken down into maybe like three Metcons and they usually last anywhere between 20 to 25, potentially 30 minutes. They don't take up the whole session. Mine are tagged on after a session. I've got a couple of clients at the moment that do like a, a real split between the two. So first week we've got push pull legs or upper lower, mainly hypertrophy work. And then we have a longer Metcon work later on in the week. Or some clients at the moment have like a 75, 25 split between hypertrophy and, and conditioning work at the end of their session. I bias my Metcons based on the session I'm doing. So if I've got lower pull today, the exercises and movements that I'm doing in my Metcon will bias a pulling movement, my back like, Ski erg, a row, pull ups, renegade rows as an example. If I've got push, we're doing like a push bias Metcon, press ups, any pushing movements, devil pressing as an example. Do I plan them? I do indeed plan them. So before I go, I'll just jot it down on a piece of paper so in my head I know what I'm doing. Today we've got a 30 minute Metcon split between two every five minutes on the minute. So when you hear me say every five minutes on the minute, it means that. I've got a set amount of work to do in that five minutes. When that fifth minute's done, we're on to the next set. We're doing it again, basically. Every five minutes on the minute, or every minute on the minute. Every 60 seconds, we're doing the work prescribed in that minute. The first one, 500 meter row and 50 unders. Unders are skips. So I've got five minutes to do that work. I try and target it so I'll base my intensity so that I'll get that work done in about four and a bit minutes to give me a little bit rest before the next fifth minute, if you understand where I'm coming from. So we'll do three sets of that. 
the, which is 15 minutes. The next every five minutes on a minute is 30 calorie ski erg and 10 renegade rows. And I'll show you what they are in my session. Doesn't need to be too confusing. Like, I'm pretty new to this world as well. I'm learning on the job. It's a good chance for you guys and girls to see me go through the processes as well. But like I said, for me, it's a weekly calorie target that may increase if we have like a, an event later on and we need to get to a kind of certain aerobic capacity for that event, but for the time being, nothing's booked. In the back of my mind, I've got like an October, November period where I'm doing something inquired about a London to Brighton bike ride that's obviously completely separate from Metcon work, but I'm just saying I've got in a couple of months time an idea of that I want to be doing a certain event. So yeah, that's Metcon metabolic conditioning for you getting fitter we're looking to improve our aerobic capacity that's all it really is okay excuse me just finishing my volvic touch of fruit we care about nature we are carbon neutral open up today's session three sets 12 to 15 of the lion hamstring curls what do you lot call it laying or lion i call it lion I see some online co coaches call it laying i've always found that prior to a hip hinge just to get the, the joints nice and warm, a little bit of a better contraction on the glutes and hamstrings. Prior to a hip hinge, I'll always do like a, a, a lion or a seated ham curl. Barbell RDL, one five to eight, one eight to 10. I used to be so strong on this, man. I used to do like 200 key at Crayford. Now look at me, 130 key, is that? You'll get there. On to some dumbbell Bulgarians. One of my favorite leg exercises, these. I absolutely love these. I did the dumbbell Bulgarians the other day on the Smith as opposed to putting my back foot on the bench. And the way that it kind of evolves, or revolves, sorry, should I say, around the foot, felt a little bit better. But I uh, did the bench today. Into a chest support incline row. Fantastic back movement if you've got no direct, like, chest supported machines at your gym. It doesn't require too much load either. Nice squeeze, really open up. Boom, bring those elbows back. It's a really good movement. I've got that program for quite a few of my clients that don't have much kit at their uh, disposal. Quite a lot of volume on these incline hammer curls. Two sets, eight to 10, two sets, 12 to 15. It's a, it's a movement that I like very, very much, the incline hammer or any incline. So bench on a slight incline, let those arms drop back, get those biceps nice and lengthened. And then an EZ D handle curl. So this goes through my legs. So two D handles looped around an EZ bar, sort of roundabout shoulder width. Fantastic movement. One set of eight and two sets, 12 to 15. So round off my seven sets. Bit of a late one today, 7.56. Just had some treatment done at Hicks, which is really handy. It's on Chatterton Road, right by me. I haven't had any treatment done for months. And this style of training, I'm feeling a little bit battered, especially like my, my calves and my flexors. So I had a nice hour deep tissue. Back home, we've got our 5K tomorrow. I'm gonna to do the 5K around the track at the Crystal Palace track which I think is about 400 meters. So we're gonna go down there tomorrow morning. Heavy, heavy carb load. No manipulation food, I just haven't eaten a lot today. It's got to eight o'clock. So something I always recommend you do on your shots when you are busy and haven't got time to like make a nice dinner, simple pasta. So I always buy on like a Sunday, a green pesto or sun-dried red pesto or like a loy gross from the sauce or something like a chili con carne sauce. 5% mince, get some pasta or some rice, bang. 10 minutes, you've got a high protein, high carbohydrate meal. So I have this, got 150 grams of pasta, 200 grams of chicken, and then I'll have a couple of bagels and jam with, uh, with some Greek yogurt and whey protein. And that'll be my kind of food for the day done. Tomorrow we'll do the 5K fasted. So we'll go and grab a coffee at Poached, and then I think we put the track like 10 to 11, I think. Bit of client work in the morning, so yeah. Saves you like, cause I could have gone dominoes tonight. He got back and thought, no, nah, I'll be good. Some pasta. Maybe we'll grab a dominoes tomorrow. Good morning and welcome to Wednesday. Today is a non-gym day, so no lifting. We're just in, we're just doing a 5K today. Going to the track in Palace, Crystal Palace. You can pay like two pound forty-five. Get an hour slot there. I haven't done a I haven't done a five k on the track like that, so it should be good. I picked up some new runners, nice vapor flyer twos. What has happened to Crystal Palace? This used to be thriving. It was the pool's gone now. 
I don't know whether it's the only 50 meter pool in London. I used to swim there, sad sight that. Very sad. All right, warm up done. This is 400 meters, I think. So that's 12, 12 and a half laps. Should, should do 5K. What? Got my Strava on. Got my Garmin on. Let's try and get sub 30. I'm a terrible runner, honestly. Man. I'm a terrible runner. I'm all right with like cycling and swimming, but running for me, I've always, I've always struggled. I'm all right sprinting in that, but I need to think long distance. Like, I need to get better. I need to get a lot better at. 5K, 30 meters. I don't know why it's not tracked my distance. I put my thing on. I thought it would do my meters when I'm running. 30 minutes, 5K, shocking. I don't like running on track. I prefer treadmill, at least I know like pace and that. I do my usual thing, just bolting it straight out the gate. Need some tips guys, need to improve this 5k, shocking. Oh well, 520 calories I think it was. 527 calories. Post run, a couple of sausage bagels. That's in the high protein bagels from uh, Warburton's. Very, very good. I think I'm gonna have to, I think what I need to do on my Wednesdays is strip back my 5k and build up to it. Like just completely reset because I've never done long distance stuff before and I feel like I've gone straight into the deep end with very little kind of steps toward a 5k, do you know what I mean? So I think I might do like a four week build up every Wednesday, gradually go up and then do interval sprints on the treadmill and start to increase like that. Because just something's not gelling. Don't know if there's any like running coaches that are watching this, but is, is that something you'd advise? So I'm just getting to my 5k and no matter what, I'm just like, I'm just screwing it. Anyway, <clears throat> 10 to 1. Have this, got a nice amount of work. I'm going to get on the computer about 2 till 6, do a big 4 hour one. Get some work done. Catch up with you in a bit. Okay, I'm having a Domino's because I want some pizza in my mouth. And I don't have to explain myself any more than that. Thank you very much. So I'm having like one or two takeaways or I eat out once or twice a week at the moment. I'm not after a certain body composition. I'm not, you know, I'm very happy with the way I look. Food is very much fuel for me at the moment. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where we're at at the moment with food. I think a lot of, oh no, I'm about to call myself a fitness influencer. I think a lot of fitness influencers and online coaches shy away from posting their foods or being open about what they eat because uh, of fear of client response or follower response. And I completely understand, back in the day when I used to upload a pizza, I just simply couldn't be bothered to respond to people saying, cheat meal, refeed. I'm like, no, it's well within my calories, I'll just fancy a pizza tonight. So I, I completely get that. And I also understand that online coaches maybe fear clients saying, well, can I try that? And they haven't got it in them to be firm enough to go, no, you simply can't. You know, I've had clients come to me and say, Tom, can I have a Domino's? I'm like, at this stage, no. Like we must press on for a few more weeks or, or whatnot. And they understand that. And it's, and it's cool. There are, or have been some occasions where I say, yeah, go on then, let's try it. You got 2000 calories a day. You're gonna to have to bank 1500 calories for your dinner, for your Domino's or whatever foods you want diet on four to five hundred calories throughout the day the feedback i get from them digestion was shit sleep was poor performance was terrible and i felt lethargic throughout the day i'm not going to do that again so sometimes just give your clients the opportunity to try it and, and nine times out of ten they're like oh yeah probably not going to do that i think diet in this way it is comes with experience i've been kind of in the industry and focusing on physique development for the last 10 years, I pretty much know the ins and outs of my body very well. And I think newbies don't quite have that experience and understanding and education with diet to, to diet like us. And I'm not saying that blind smoke on my own eyes, I'm just saying this level of kind of understanding output training and nutrition does come with experience. But uh, yeah, there you go. Do you wanna know what I have on my pizza? I have seven cheap, this is all accounted for by the way, this isn't like a cheat meal or a refeed. When I have a Domino's I opt for protein and calories. So as long as I get my 200 grams of protein in for the day, can you see that? Alongside my 2800 calories, then happy days. My dinner tonight, which is my pizza, 1252 calories plus seven chicken strippers is 1700 calories. 
I did my 5K this morning fasted. I had two low fat sausage protein bagels. I had a whey smoothie. Gonna have my pizza. And then before bed, I've got 200 grams of Greek yogurt, blueberries and whey protein to finish. So it's all accounted for what I have on my pizza. So I'm half and half at the moment. My first half, I do the cheeseburger, take the tomato sauce off, <sighs> barbecue base always. Create your own on the right half, onions, jalapenos, ground beef, burger sauce, barbecue sauce base, and pineapple. I like pineapple on the pizza. Sometimes I have like pineapple, sweet corn, and pepperoni. Great combo, and onions. Right, I'm very hot, I'm gonna go have a cold shower. And then tidy the house. I'm very much one of these people that needs to be in a pristine house. Cleanliness needs to be A1 before consuming this sort of food. I don't know if anyone else is on that, on that sort of level. I can't, I can never have bad food, bad food in a dirty house. It just doesn't, nah. Beautiful. These better be crispy. Sometimes they are, uh... oh good, nice. Well done, nice. A good Domino's today. Hi, my name is Troy McClure. Welcome to today's, welcome to today. Today is the day. Thursday, day number four of the full week of training. We have got quads, so we've got a couple of direct quad exercises today just to bump a little bit of quad volume up. To be completely honest with you, I think assessing one, how I'm feeling, and two, looking at where my conditioning work and my hypertrophy or like my direct training work might be a little bit too much hypertrophy so I think we might pull pull volume down a little bit but uh, we'll see how we go on so we'll do a few direct quad exercises open up with a little superset maybe some cycle squats and lunges then a leg press and then we'll go into our four or five hundred calorie metcon I think we might be training with Danny today so we'll do some some partner work. Some thirsty Thursdays partner work. I'm liking this Jay Cutler Pre. Purely because of the taste, but also its effect. The other pre workout was good. That's a little bit stronger. I feel like I found a new everyday pre and a new strong pre. Right, let's get down to the gym. Nah, it's not right, I can't say that energy. Hello, welcome to today's episode. We have got a direct quad session and then a leg, or like a quad, quad metcon. So we're gonna open up with some dumbbell cycling squats, which is essentially like heel elevated sort of dumbbell squats, but the bias is slightly more on the quad. So we bring our feet slightly together. We'll superset that with some walking dumbbell lunges, five on each leg. Then we'll do a leg press. So we'll probably do three, four, five, you want me? Three, four, five, six. So about eight sets for quads, and then we'll go into a 400, potentially 500 calorie Metcon. A cue for making your walking dumbbell or kettlebell lunge slightly more quad bias is one, torso positioning. So you'll notice I'm quite bolt upright when I do my walking lunges with the kettlebells. And also my stride, my stride's a little shorter when I'm just focusing on my, on my quads. And feel free to, if you are, a newbie in walking lunges, feel free to reset. You don't have to kind of go boom, 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 boom. If you find it more comfortable to kind of stride, lunge, reset and go again. And then you just build up confidence over time whereby you can go one leg after the other. Okay, so onto the leg press. In order for us to bias quad slightly more on a leg press, the idea is to get our feet as low down on the pad as possible. Now, obviously ankle mobility is gonna play into this and the fact that we Everything's a competition nowadays in the fitness industry unit in terms of range of motion. And it puts the idea in other people's heads, individual clients, other just normal trainers, that they're doing the exercise incorrectly. And it may just mean that their ankle mobility is, is not as good as some people. So elevating the heels like we did with the bicycle squats, any heel elevated work is gonna bias that quad a little bit more. And there's obviously techniques and, and stretching that we can do to improve ankle mobility. Another thing is to ensure that our back does not come off this pad. So we see loads of people that are leg pressing with crazy range of motion, but as soon as that back starts to lift, this is not the sort of area and position that we want to be in. 
foot positioning for me when I leg press. I press just outside of shoulder width and I open my feet ever so slightly. And that position, once I'm fixed in, is comfortable for me. It allows a decent range of motion. My ankle mobility is not too bad, to be honest. My back is, and glutes are firmly pressed against the pad. I can go into my press and I can push. As soon as you ever get into a position when you get down here and this starts to happen, that's not what we want to be doing. So either reduce the load or change your foot positioning. No, no, don't be silly. Listen, mikasa sukasa. Right, we're doing some, uh, we've got Danny in today, doing some partner work. Thirsty Thursdays, 400 calories for a time, or you might see that as task priority. We're gonna do dumbbell thrusters. Is that gonna be all right with your quad? Mm -hmm. yep. Of course it is. Short of pain. Mamba mentality, we'll do dumbbell thrusters, we'll do uh, dumbbell, Burpee deadlift, dumbbell burpee deadlift, and then we'll do ski, ski erg, ski, Jesus, it's awful. So up here we've got 30, 24, 18, 12, 9, 6. That is essentially 30 reps, 24, 18, 12, 9, and 6. For the ski, we'll go on calories. So, as opposed to ski reps, we'll just do 30 calories, 24 calories, 18, 12, 9 and 6. If you're struggling, you can take a little bit of rest, but we'll just pace ourselves and try to go through and track our calories. Probably be able to burn about 400 plus on this one, so we will see. Fuck man, that was a hard one. Dumbbell burpee deadlifts, just fucking took them out. Just these straight dumbbell deadlifts. 21 minutes 15, we rested for about 45 to 60 seconds between each 30, 24, 18, 12, 9, 6. Try and decrease your rest periods around this kind of latter stage of the Metcon, but 21, 15 for time. Me and Dan will come down and do that again, same time next week. Try and get like sub 20 minutes. Keep fucking getting it, man. <laughs> I think I mentioned in my previous video that I'm having to be a lot more proactive when it comes down to recovery at the moment with this style of training. So I've got fortnightly, fortnightly deep tissue booked in around the corner from, we, from me, which is cool. Weekly Epsom salt baths, stretch body specific parts. So today, for example, before bed, I do a 10 minute quad stretch routine to so any any particular session that I do, whether it's quad, hamstring, back, chest, anything, that 10 minute will be directed, that 10 minute stretch will be directed to, uh, to that. And in the morning I'll, I'll always stretch. Every morning I stretch on my little, on my yoga mat. Good morning, today is Friday. We have a delts and tricep session. <clears throat> no conditioning work today because tomorrow I'm gonna go down to the Fieldbridge factory because they do a class every Saturday. So usually I have condition work today, on Friday and then Saturday I just have a straight session. Probably like got a bit more time on my hands so I jump in the sauna and that, but I am gonna switch it and do a big old conditioning session at Fieldbridge. Plus I'm going out tomorrow as well, so not, not the end of the world if I go over on calories. Okay, so back into David Lloyd for today's delts and tricep session. Amy jumped in today, so I think it's always nice to get some paired work on deltas. I feel like it's an area that you can really hammer short rest intervals 
drive a lot of volume into there. So I opened up, or I always open up most of my shoulder sessions with a, a lateral raise variation. Today we use the cuffs, two sets, 12 to 15, drive a little bit of blood in there, get the joints nice and warmed up before we go into a heavier press. So I use plate loaded shoulder press today. Could go into dumbbells, could do Smith machine, could even get technical on that Smith and reverse bandit if you feel that fatigue is setting in a little too soon. Again, this machine is quite a clunky one. It's not as nice as the old Cybex that we used to use to, uh, to to press with. And then after my plate loaded shoulder press, I went into my superset. So I paired a half knee landmine press with a standing dumbbell lateral raise. Nice weight, again, to drive volume into there. Pair a press, overhead press of some sort with uh, some dumbbell lateral work. You could do these on a close cable stack if you wanted to. Do it cuffed and then do some standing dumbbell thrusts if you wanted to. Tricep work today, dual rope tricep extensions. Had both ropes today, which was cool. One set, 10 to 12. Two sets, 12 to 15. Three sets, six to eight, close grip bench. So sometimes I use the Smith. Sometimes I use that machine that you've already seen, which is really nice because you can position that whereby you can go a little bit more narrow and then finish with my overhead cable extensions. Nice and easy. Two sets of 15 to 18. And we're done. I'm going to go and enjoy my Friday night and I shall see you tomorrow morning. Happy Saturday, folks. Welcome. It's fight night tonight. Another meatball and paddy dub on the cards. I don't care, lad. I'd rather be fat and happy. Just have to try and get a good enough phone signal because I know Josh is a big paddy fan as well. We have today a fasted chest, back, and bicep session into an hour long, or well, like 45 to an hour long conditioning session. So I'm going down to the field grid factory to do my set. My session and then I'll jump in with their conditioning work to make up for yesterday because I usually do it on Friday. I'll tell you what, I'm loving Jay Cutler's new stuff, you know. The pre is spot on. The EAAs on its own is fantastic. This is a, is a little combination of EAAs, BCAs and some carbohydrates. So we're sipping that throughout my longer sessions. It's great. I say he's done well. It's obviously a team behind it, but fair play. Fair play. So fastest session today, a couple of questions off the back of those alcohol videos that I did, it was like, what you, how do you only eat X amount of food throughout the day? And I was like, I fast, wake up, hydrate, caffeinate, go and train, and I'll have my first meal about midday, and then I'll have another little protein feeding before I go out, and then I've got, then I've got the calories. Right. Okay, so big session today. I paired my chest and back work together. So I opened up with flat dumbbell press, three sets of 10, straight into body weight pull-ups. Okay, so put the bench near, near your pull-up station and go one after the other. The handles at Feel Good Factory are fantastic for this style of pull-up. It allows that little bit more range. A way around this, if your gym doesn't have these particular handles, just loop some D-handles around your regular lat pull, or sorry, your, your pull-up station, and you have the ability for that natural rotation of the wrists. Then we went into some pendle rows, super set with some bodyweight dips. Only did two sets of 12 on the bodyweight dips because chest volume isn't as high as back. So three sets of six on pendle and then two lots of 12 on the bodyweight dips. Could do these weighted if you wanted to as well. Then into some single arm spider curls using the dumbbells. So bench on a slight incline. Really nice movement. If you're you know, pressed for time, you could do this with an easy bar. That position that your hands are in is quite tricky. I would, I would recommend an easy bar as opposed to a straight. And then just some rope hammer curls. That DS stands for drop set. And then we went into our Metcon. That was sick. Creepy sick. Did like 640 something calories, which is cool. A little bit over what I'm used to in terms of my last conditioning, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going out tonight anyway. So to put things into context, I've had about a thousand calories. Came back, had two scoops of whey, walk gunner, then had two bagels with four bacon medallions and two eggs. And now I've got about 1,800 calories to play with this evening through drinks and if I want a bit of food on the way home. All right, I'm in a bit of a rush. I'm gonna jump in the shower. Try not to drink too much tonight because we've got a cycle ride tomorrow. Good morning. Today is Sunday. This is a rare messy TM Cycles house. It's very rare that you'll see a messy cycles house. Today we have a, a cycle ride. However, this is my first one. I need to get my bike serviced. The gears 
the, the, it's not going to the bigger gear, so it's just clicking on the smaller one. Still rideable, just means I'm gonna be like, my work rate obviously is gonna be a little higher. So I'm gonna try and get it serviced. I was thinking of going to, just cycling down to David Lloyd, taking my cleats and then just doing my like 15K on the watt bike, so I'm still undecided. Whatever, whatever we'll do, pre-cycle is two packs of oats, handful of mixed berries, some dark chocolate and some banana. Would you Adam and Eve it folks? After 10 years, TM finally cycles. It was all part of a plan. When I sat there in Lucian College, I plotted that. Plotted out 10 years I did. Right. Gone with the Sirocco gear. Got the shorts, got a couple of jerseys, under vest as well. And uh, when did I go? I went to Rafa the other day. I went into Rafa. Apparently in the cycle world, Rafa's a bit wanky. Which I, I, I understand now. It's for people that sort of, like the city boys apparently, is that it? Like London city wankers that don't really, they've got all the gear but they don't really train very hard. Supposedly. Hey, I'm new in the cycling game, yeah? Don't shoot me. So, I've not, I've, so I didn't get any Rafa gear. But, I'm a bit annoyed now because they've just done a collaboration with Palace and it looks sick but I'm gonna to stick to my guns and just... Any further suggestions of gear is appreciated. Chris Oye. I'm Chris Oye, Contador, Wiggins. I'm all of them. And I used to take gear, so I'm Lance Armstrong. Imagine if that's what I start doing now. I stopped taking on the bollocks and I started banging EPO. God, Tom's siphoning off you, well. What's happened? You've been banging loads of EPO apparently. Let's go for a cycle. Right, cycle ride number one. Gonna go flow Blackfriars, which is about 20 kilometers, but you lot do miles, didn't you? I'm not too sure on the... Uh, Conversion. I'm off. I think you're gonna have a nice life. Well, 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 there we have it. TM Cycle's first full week of training. Nothing too crazy in terms of the numbers on the runs, the swims, and that. Nothing's booked in the diary. But uh, I want to improve on my 5Ks, like I mentioned. I think it's just a case of just, just keep showing up, really. Keep showing them up, show, showing up, getting them done, and uh, understanding to pace yourself a bit better. I'm going to go back on a treadmill on Wednesday. I find it's a little, little easier for me. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go on a cycle ride with my old man next week, and I'm eyeing up the London to Brighton cycle ride in September. I think that'll be a good one to do. But uh, yeah, there we go. Object, like looking at it objectively, I think I need to pull my training volume down a little bit. I think it's biasing hypertrophy too much in, in terms of the gym. And the amount of sets per week, I think I'm gonna pull down to about 10. 10 sets per body part. I think that's probably the sweet spot for me at what I wanna do with my self at the moment, being more performance driven as opposed to my look, and I think 10 sets is probably the bare minimum to retain the tissue alongside food and the training. I think it's gonna get me in a, in a decent enough spot. So have a little read here, just because I'm waking up every morning and I'm feeling like, I do miss the, uh, that's one area of the, the, the juicy days that I miss, is being able to go and bury myself in a leg session or whatever, and just wake up the next morning and think, the recovery element now is, is definitely noticeable. But that will get better, and as you build up that level of conditioning, you, you do build up that recovery and 
you kind of almost have to push through. This has only been the first week, so fresh week tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I will keep you updated for any future events that I do plan on doing. And we shall go from there. Appreciate this was a long one, so uh, yeah. Don't know if you did it in parts or did the whole thing. If you did it in the whole thing, you're a true goat, OG. Right, I'll see you very soon. Thank you for watching this episode. Thank you, good night, and much love.